Texas Congressman Ron Paul, who is also a Republican presidential candidate, has not only raised a quick seven million bucks over the internet in just a couple of days, but earlier today, he took Fed Chief Ben Bernanke to the woodshed and administered a relentless attack. Look at this. There's a dollar crisis out there, and people's money is being stolen. People who have saved, they're being robbed. I mean, if you, if you have def a, a devaluation of the dollar at 10%, people have been robbed of 10%. It's going to lead to higher interest rates and a weaker economy. All right, joining me now is the aforementioned presidential candidate, Texas Congressman, Mr. Ron Paul. Ms. Paul, welcome back to the program, sir. Seldom have I seen such a licking applied to a Fed chief, and I have been around a while. I see you grinning. Uh, let me just ask you, first of all, what was the major part of your beef with uh, Ben Bernanke? Well, my, my big beef is that nobody looks at the cause of our problems, and the cause comes from the Federal Reserve creating too much credit and distorting the markets. And everybody bugs the Fed, all the congressmen, everybody else in Wall Street says, you know, what we need is more money, lower the interest rates. And nobody asks, how do you lower, lower, how, how do you lower interest rates? Well, you do that by creating more money. And we have to get back to the sound fundamentals of finding out why you have inflation, why you have malinvestment, why you have bubbles. And it comes from the Federal Reserve creating too much credit. What uh, specifically would you like to see Mr. Bernanke do right now? Well, I said he was between the rock and a hard place, and he is. That nobody, what, he, what he does is going to be wrong because we need a new monetary system. But in the meantime, you know, if he inflates, he destroys the value of the dollar. If he destroys the value of the dollar, we get inflation, we get a weak economy. So there is no easy answer, but we certainly have to talk about the causes and move away from this monetary system. If anything, he should be more careful with the amount of new money he creates out of thin air because eventually this will just lead to losses of confidence in the dollar on the international exchange market and that's exactly what's happened here in the last month or so the dollar is going down sharply and it's because we're resorting to inflation well you're quite right about the dollar going down let me ask you in terms of a new monetary system and without question you're the only presidential candidate delving into these issues which are of course of great interest to investors everywhere what kind of new monetary system would you like to see do you want the dollar to be gold backed again would you like to go back to fixed exchange Change rates. Give us a sense of where you'd like to go. Well, we, we should follow the law, and the law is the Constitution. The Constitution said only gold and silver should be legal tender. We don't really have clear authority to have a central bank. Jefferson and Jackson got rid of a national bank because they didn't like it. We've only had a central bank for a sh relatively short period of time, but we can't get rid of the Fed in a day or a week. But we could legalize competing currencies. I mean, we compete with currencies around the world all the time, but, but why can't we have gold and silver competing as a currency and let people save? Get the taxes off currency. You can't tax money. So there's a way to develop a competing currency uh, under the current situation. And if people don't like the, the fiat currency that continues loses its value, they can opt out and start dealing in gold and silver. Are you going to make that uh, part of your plank, part of your argument, the competing currency, which I think, sirs, correct me if I'm wrong, was raised years ago by Friedrich Hayek. I think he raised that, Nobel Prize winner. Are you going to make this part of your campaign? I, I have in the past, and I will continue to do it. Hayek actually would allow the marketplace to develop the competing currencies, and I think that's not a bad idea either. So I sort of support the Hayekian and viewpoint, but uh, even with the government involved, they could change the tax laws and allow the competing currency to develop uh, more smoothly. Am I the only interviewer with you, sir, who has raised Friedrich Hayek's name? No, but it's good to hear his name. It's, it's very rare that anybody does. But uh, I have to say that uh, the road to serfdom had a lot of influence on me in my early years. Indeed, the constitution of liberty as well for me. Let me go to your phenomenal fundraising story in our remaining, remaining moments, sir. It is reported that you've raised up to $7 million in the new fiscal quarter, almost all of that on the Internet. It is a huge amount of money. What can you tell us about this? Well, it sometimes is bewildering because uh, we didn't organize it. It was spontaneous. It's a real grassroots effort. Some individual in Florida I have not met nor have I talked to. I surely need to thank him. But uh, he's 37 years old, never been in politics in his life, read what I stood for and said he needed to help me. And he organized it himself on the Internet. And he did it on uh, November 5th. And uh, he was disappointed he didn't raise more. But uh, on that 24-hour period, he, uh, he raised... What was it? Uh, four point. Uh 
or 3.4 or whatever. I mean, a huge amount of money. And uh, it means that the people are very unhappy, very disgruntled, and that uh, we've tapped into this uh, uneasiness uh, with the message of freedom and the Constitution and sound money and balanced budget and also a foreign policy that makes a lot more sense than one that we have. Where are you going to put this money? It's going into what the people sent it for me to do, and that is to campaign, buy television ads and radio ads, and you, we've been very skimpy on uh, the way we hire people, and we will remain skimpy, but we will be hiring more people, and we are going to run a, uh, a very well-organized uh, campaign. In these uh, upcoming ads with all this money, what would your central message be, sir? The message in the campaign, actually the overall message is freedom and the Constitution, limited government, free markets, uh, you know, I am for free trade, I'm for less taxes, I want to get rid of the income tax, I want to let young people out of Social Security, and the kids on campuses applaud loudly for that, but I tell them the only way we can do that is we have to save money somewhere, and I would, uh, you know, do something about our American empire because it's not being run very well, we're wasting a lot of money, and we should be taking care of our people here at home. If you don't get the Republican nomination, will you consider running as a third party candidate, either as an independent candidate or, as you have in the past, run as a libertarian candidate? I have no plans to do that, no intention, and it's an overwhelming task, and I have to just continue to pursue what I'm doing right now. All right, Congressman Ron Paul, sir, we thank you very much for coming back on Cudlow & Company. Thank you. All right, next up, our all-star market panel is going to weigh in. Mr. Paul wants a new monetary system. He wants gold and silver. He wants competing currencies. I believe Don Luskin is going to have a lot to say, and so will the others. By the way, coming up on tomorrow's program, former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton is going to talk about war with Iran and al-Qaeda taking over Pakistan. Wow, two tough subjects. All that is weighing on our economy and our markets and our dollar as well. And as always, we are firm believers in the Kudlow Creed. I believe free market capitalism is the best path to prosperity.